I greet you with today's thought, and today I fulfill a promise that I made last week. And in fulfilling that promise, we will be discussing two subjects today, ignorance and bigotry. The two often go together, and a bit of American history. I wonder how much American history is even taught in our schools these days, so all of this may come new to you. The part about American history, just straight American history, I guess should you should already know this, but I'm going to remind everybody. And then we'll talk about a little bit of American Jewish history, something that I wouldn't expect everybody to know, but you will know now. And let's get right to it. Now, the bigotry part comes in from a, a vlog that I did uh, last last week it was, or it could have been the week before. It was about Israel and about how Israel, how there's a double standard for Israel. That Israel seems to be the only, well, it's the only Jewish state, and the only Jewish state is the only state that apparently is not allowed to win a war. Israel has been attacked multiple times, and every time they... Uh, Every, the international community cheers as the Israelis fight back. But as soon as they turn the tables and they're winning and they're heading toward a complete victory, they are pressured to stop. So that was that was a subject. And then I got uh, a couple of comments. And one of the comments is this one. I'm putting it up right now. And it is, uh, try winning with your own money, exclamation point. Now, I don't know the, the gentleman, or it could have been a woman who wrote the, that comment, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. There's a comment section below the video. But to me, that is anti-Semitic. And why do I feel that's anti-Semitic? That's because, well, try winning with your own money. Your, I am sure she meant Israel. Israel try winning with your own money, or Israel should try winning with her own money. But that's not what she said. She said, or he said, uh, he or she or it or zer or whatever the, your your uh, designated uh, your preferred pronoun is, because you're probably a liberal if you're writing this, and uh, try winning with your own money. Your means me means of winning with my own money. But I think she's, uh, this person is lumping me in with, uh, well, you know, addressing me as a Jew, basically, and saying, I guess, that uh, Jews should pay for, uh, should be donating to Israel, and Israel should not accept money anywhere else, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you a little bit of Jewish history. I'll be reading you some quotes, but first, let's get to the, the real ignorance part, because everybody should know this. Everybody should know this. The Revolutionary War, we'll be talking about the Revolutionary War today, when we fought and for and won our independence. Now, some people apparently are under the impression that we did this all on our own, that we financed the war, and that is absolutely not true. Everybody should know this. Benjamin Franklin was, well, he was actually the world's first superstar. He became known worldwide, and he uses that reputation to spend a lot of time in France where he charmed everybody, especially the ladies, my understanding is, and um, uh, raised money for our revolution from the French. And in fact, uh, Louis the Sixteenth the, the got uh, his head cut off for his trouble because a part of the of the reason why he was beheaded was because France's finances had just uh, gone into the um, what's French for toilet? I, I don't know. Maybe you could tell me. But anyways, the the country was bankrupt, and it was because of the money that Louis the Sixteenth provided to the United States of America. So this idea, what if France had said to us, the, use your own money, uh, go America, try winning with your own money. Well, if we had to try to win with our own money, we would have lost. The, the Brits would have defeated us. So that's so you see the hypocrisy right there, that we should not help other countries and allies. Well, what if we had said to France and England in World War II, uh, when we provided them uh, military aid and sent soldiers to fight and die for the, the cause, and I'll, I'll 
give you a little information on that in a minute, because they, um, what if we said to France and England, uh, try to win with your own money? Because we provided a lot of money to France and England. And after the war, of course, everybody should know about the Marshall Plan. We helped the, the defeated uh, Germans uh, um, to, to rebuild. And I believe that was the same. Well, we helped uh, uh, Japan, too. I don't know if that was part of the Marshall Plan or if it was something separate. I, you, someone can fill me in on that. But we provided money for France and for England. And the thing about France and England, you have to understand, you have to understand the rules of, of war. In other words, we could have stayed out of World War II. We, because we, what happened was France and England were in a war with Germany. And the reason he declared war on us was because in under international law, when one country, when countries are fighting each other, you, other outside countries have to be, are required to remain neutral, like Switzerland re, remained neutral. Switzerland was never attacked. Ireland was never attacked. Ireland stayed neutral. Now, we provided aid. We were not in the war yet, but we provided uh, aid to England, the Lend-Lease Program, and that was absolutely the right thing to do. But uh, knowing FDR knew, everybody knew that by providing war material to England that we would no longer be be neutral and we were we would invite uh, Germany to declare war on us and they did and that's that's how we got into the war and that's the way um, you know thank God we did but the the point is we provided the the aid and knowing what would happen knowing how many Americans would die but we still provided the aid so you see how hypocritical it is uh, it, we, we could have done nothing, but we knew the right thing to do was to do something. We help our allies and our strongest, most loyal ally right now, whether you like it or not, uh, you Jew haters out there, is Israel. The Middle East would be, we would be stuck, uh, we would be mired deeply in the Middle East of Israel. We're not there, uh, pretty much guaranteeing security or, or, or well, I don't want to get off on a track here. The point is that they are an ally. They deserve our aid as much as France and England. But now we get to a little, this is where uh, I guess the person who wrote the, this comment is going to be a little disappointed when I tell him, uh, when I tell everybody about a, a gentleman, a patriot, an American patriot during the um, Revolutionary War named Chaim Solomon, or Chaim is how you would really pronounce it, but anglicized Chaim Solomon. I'm going to read you uh, a few quotes, quite a few quotes. Now, this is the, from the Wikipedia entry. I'm linking to it so you can read it. You can see all the footnotes, all the references. There is a statue of Chaim Solomon in Chicago, in Chicago, Illinois. It's actually a Chicago, three people in the statue, George Washington in the center, and then the, the financiers of, which we'll get to in a moment, of the Revolutionary War, Robert Morris on standing on Washington's right and on his left side, Chaim Solomon. Now, the, the difference between Robert Morris and Chaim Solomon is that Robert Morris, uh, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, he raised money. He was uh, the finan He raised money for the the revolution. But Chaim Solomon not only raised money but donated money. He is, well, let's go right to the quotes. Now, I'm just going to read you a bunch of quotes in all in a, a row, and you'll see how unjust, how unfair that this comment. Uh, um, Israel, uh, whether you're talking about me or you're talking about Israel, Israel, Israel pay for your own war. And, um, well, here we go. Let's go. I'm um, kind of dawdling. Let's get right to the quotes. Chaim Solomon was a Polish American Jewish businessman and political financial broker who assisted the superintendent of finance, Robert Morris, as the prime, fin prime financier of the colonist side during the uh, American Revolutionary War against Great Britain. 
Having immigrated to New York City from Poland, Salman aided the Continental Army during the period of the American Revolution and helped convert French loans into ready cash by selling bills of exchange for Morris, the superintendent of finance. He also brokered large donations and donated, this is the important part, and donated his entire, entire fortune to the American Revolutionary Army and various founding fathers of the United States. Now we get to uh, the revolution uh, during uh, his activity in the actual revolution. Sympathizing with the Patriot cause, Salomon joined the New York branch of the Sons of Liberty, famous for the Boston Tea Party. In September 1776, he was arrested as a spy. The British pardoned him, but detained him for 18 months on a British boat as an interpreter for Hessian soldiers. German troops employed by the British. Salmon used this position to help prisoners of war from the Continental Army escape, encouraged the Hessians to desert the war effort, and collaborated to carry out other espionage activities. In 1778, Salmon was arrested again, convicted of espionage, and sentenced to death. Again, he escaped, making his way with his family to the revolutionary capital in Philadelphia. So let's just um, let's just dawdle on that for a moment. So he didn't just donate money; he risked his life. He was arrested. He was he spied for for the American cause. He was sentenced to death, and he managed to escape. But um, so we're not just talking about money here. And I would just a little aside here: Francis Salvador first Jew killed in the Revolutionary War. And there was another, there was an officer also, I don't, his name escapes me, but served as an officer in the uh, Revolutionary War, fighting uh, under George Washington. But back to uh, our story. Once we settled, Salmon resumed his activities as a broker. He became the agent to the French Council, as well as the paymaster for the French forces in North America. In 1781, he began working extensively with Robert Morris, the newly appointed superintendent uh, for finance for the 13 colonies. So let's just uh, put in a a little word for France again. So agent to the French council, paymasters for the French forces in North America. So the the French not only donated money, they donated soldiers, soldiers of French soldiers. If you didn't know, if you, if you never heard of the Marquis de Lafayette, then we really have a problem with our public education system. So that, but so France said, uh, sent soldiers and let's just uh, go on uh, from the, because now we get to the real intro, we're getting to the real interesting part. From the period of 1781-1784, records show Salmon's fundraising and personal lending helped provide over $650,000, which uh, in 2023 dollars, nineteen million five hundred sixty-five dollars three hundred eighty. Two dollars and thirty-five cents in financing to General George Washington in his war effort. His most this, this is the really good part now. His most meaningful financial contribution, however, came immediately prior to the siege of Yorktown. In August 1781, the Continental Army trapped Lieutenant General Charles Cornwallis in the Virginia coastal town of Yorktown. George Washington and the main army and Count uh, Rochambeau with his French army, again, the French uh, sending soldiers fighting right alongside the Americans, decided to march from the Hudson Highlands to Yorktown and deliver the final blow. But Washington's war chest was completely empty, as was that of Congress. Without food, uniforms, and supplies, Washington's troops were close to mutiny. Washington determined that he needed at least $20,000 to finance the campaign. When Morris told him there were no funds and no credit available, Washington said, send for Haim Solomon. Solomon raised $20,000 through the sale of bills of exchange. With that contribution, Washington conducted the Yorktown campaign, which proved to be the final battle of the revolution. So everybody should know about Yorktown and another word for the French now, the French forces fighting with Washington, but also French ships blockaded Chesapeake Bay to prevent 
the British ships, the British Navy, from coming in to rescue the um, the Brits, uh, whom we had, whom we and the French had trapped uh, at Yorktown. So uh, again, from the French, uh, help from the French too. But the the financing, the the ability to even wage the the war, uh, the effort in um, in Yorktown was thanks to Heim Solomon, a Jew. Salomon brokered the sale of a majority of the war aid from France and the Dutch Republic. Oh, I guess so we got money from the Dutch too. Selling bills of exchange to American merchants. Salomon also personally supported various members of the Continental Congress during their stay in Philadelphia, including James Madison and James Wilson. He requested below market interest rates and he never asked for repayment. And now uh, we see what happens to uh, Chaim Solomon for all his generosity to, to the American cause. The financier died suddenly and in poverty on January 8, 1785 in Philadelphia due to the failure of governments and private lenders to repay the debt incurred by the war, his family was left penniless at his death at age 44. The hundreds of thousands of dollars of continental debt Salomon bought with his own fortune were worth only about 10 cents on the dollar when he died. And I'll just uh, mention another little story. It's not in the Wikipedia entry, but I read this somewhere else. But you may have heard, if you study history at all, the, the from the Revolutionary War period, uh, a, a, a saying, not worth a continental, not worth a continental. A continental wa- is the continental dollar that the continental government issued during the Revolutionary War. It was paper money, not backed by anything. So that's why people would say, not worth a continental. But what they did in Boston Chaim Solomon would, he guaranteed these continental, that you'd bring him a continental, he would sign the continental, just like the, the Treasury Secretary signs uh, the, the, your, your dollar bills today. He would sign and he would, he backed the currency. Okay, so uh, again, this whole idea, uh, this statement, and what set me off on this, the telling Israelis or telling Jews, win with your own money, well, uh, I got news for you, as you just saw. By the way, here is a stamp uh, from 1975, 1975 uh, stamp uh, honoring Chaim Solomon. So there you go. Uh, the American Revolution, the most crucial battle of the American Revolution, was financed by a Jew. And uh, I guess I'll leave you with this question. What if Chaim Solomon had said, told George Washington, Win with your own money. That's my thought for today. Thanks for stopping by. If you could subscribe, that would really be great. Share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it. But most of all, come back and see me again. I would love to see all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.